name is Mike, and I'm with my good friend Ethan. How's it going, Mike? It's I was looking for a rainbow a second ago as it's pouring out, but yet the sun is shining. That sounds like a lot of fun, Ethan, and I think we need to caution ourselves from having fun, as as that is our topic today. Yes, it is, and I don't know, fu- fun. Hmm. Well, I, I just I guess I'll go ahead and dig right into the letter that was sent to us by one of our favorite listeners, John. Yes. I mean open up his letter here and written no doubt this is a good one yes all right Uh, john puritan from boring oregon says dear ethan and mike i told my youth pastor that i play video games and read comic books when i am bored and he gave me a five minute lecture on how christians should always be working and serving he said the world is corrupted and led astray by leisure and fun should i sell all my video games and comic books to become a better Christian? Interesting question, John. What do you think, Mike? Uh, you know, theology and fun have always been a battle that I'm always waging in my mind. I don't know where fun begins and good theology ends. So I would love to know myself, wh- what does the Bible say about having fun? Um, you can't find the word fun in the Bible. I know that much. Or the word comic book or video game. And that's a downer for anyone trying to look for direct Bible verses to support those hobbies. So I guess the question is, is there anywhere in the Bible that supports taking leisurely activities, having hobbies, having fun, taking a minute for yourself? I don't know. Yeah. I I don't, I I, I don't know. I know one verse, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says, pray without ceasing like never stop praying so i don't know paul must not have had much fun i think he he must have like stayed in his closet and just prayed all day all night so maybe, maybe we shouldn't have fun according to that verse right like who who in the bible has a hobby i mean i guess your hobby could be shooting arrows but that was for war uh you never saw jesus playing sports um no one was ever reading fiction books uh no one was like and then the disciples played a quick game of chess you know you don't hear about that everyone in the bible's working from moses to paul so if you're trying to find someone like the king of fun in the bible you're gonna have a hard time finding it Mm. That's a good point, Mike. That's a good point. Doesn't Jesus say, you know, the food, the food I eat is the work that the father gives me? Isn't, isn't work enough to keep us just in line and, you know, obedient and content? That has to be the the final line on it, right? It could be because it it, it talks about how we're supposed to give everything to God. But I'm, I I kind of want to ask John's youth group leader a question though, because what do they do at youth group for an hour and a half if they don't play any games or have fun? Yeah, that is, yeah, why? would a youth pastor say that this must be a very different culture because youth group was all about coming together as a community to play games have fun you know tell jokes Uh, youth group is where you learn that god can be a fun person so i don't know if uh, this is a shining example of do i want to be part of this youth pastor's group that is a good question and something for me to think about. I just helped start a youth group back up at the church I'm being an interim pastor at. And we got a bunch of new 7th and 8th graders. And let me tell you what, they do not stop smiling and laughing and giggling and sometimes interrupting and being silly. I try to figure what would Jesus do if he was their leader? Would he just be like, knock it off? It's time yeah. to memorize your Bible. Uh, right. Or would he or would he have fun with them? I think this is a good WWJD question. Why would you want to go to a youth group if they never had fun or played games? You know, as Christians, it's part of our brains to think that Jesus' schedule was like 6.30, wake up, pray, um, go into town, evangelize, work on some guy's garden, lecture the apostles, go to bed. You know, it, it just does not sound like Jesus took a moment for... A hobby unless unless he threw in some of his woodworking into his ministry scripture doesn't say but i wouldn't be surprised it's true and, and i bet the first wedding jesus uh, was at and, and early in the book of john when he's an adult uh, many people credit his first miracle being what i would call fun right he wedding's already been going on and normally people would pull out less good wine and his mom kind of comes and tells him hey everyone here needs to have more fun um, we're celebrating, so why don't you turn this water into wine? Ooh. So to me, right from the get-go, God is about celebration and joy and fun. Yeah, isn't there isn't there holidays in the Bible? The Old Testament, you know, seems to be talking a lot about those. They're somewhere written between the purity of verses and the, you know, don't bleed on this and don't eat that verses. 
but I think there's a lot of holidays. And, and I think the more we look at the Jewish history, their celebrations were much longer and more intense than many of ours. Often we'll have a wedding celebration, you have the service and then you have the reception and it might be four or five hours for a long wedding. They would celebrate for days and days. I read this meme factoid and take a meme factoid with a grain of salt. But if it's true, then this sounds awesome. That uh, medieval times, the the Christian like landowners would make up holidays uh, like and they put them all over the month just so that their their workers could, you know, get more rest and get more breaks because they know that they'd be better workers if they could recharge. So they would come up with like new holidays. Interesting. Now, why would anyone think that God hates fun? I mean, it sounds like we nailed this on the head, but I feel like I feel like there's this layer of, uh, you know, this belief that if you're doing something fun, you should feel bad about it. There, there is that idea. Uh, and I will be the first to admit that a lot of times things that we shouldn't do are fun. Uh, I think we mm. wouldn't want to sin or do things that we shouldn't do, some of them, but we want to do them because they are fun or exciting or get us uh, anticipating what might happen. I want, I want to share a quick story. Uh, I was doing Hurricane Katrina relief with a ministry from Brockport College, and we were down uh, south for doing hurricane relief on our second trip. We brought it's like five or six non-Christians with us. So we had over 20 people and we had a, we debriefed at the end of the day where the teams did and what they did. And then afterwards we'd have a voluntarily, voluntary Bible study. So you didn't have to do this. And quickly the non-Christians realized who they were and didn't come to that. But at our debrief on the third day, one of the girls who was not a Christian said this in the sharing time. And I wish I never forgot it. And she said, you know what? You guys are Christians and you're actually fun to be around. Ooh, and praise I, from Caesar. And I was shocked by that. First, why did she assume we weren't? Is it because we didn't drink and didn't swear and didn't do the things that her and her friends normally did? Um, it, but it took her just hanging out with us to realize that we don't we didn't have to do some of those things in order to have fun that we could just have fun working hard and sweating together and help and fix the house and still have fun i mean show me a pastor who's known for being silly and goofy and you will get an assumption that he doesn't really know the bible that well isn't that the isn't that the stereotype that like oh that guy can't lead anyone into a serious conversation with God because of how goofy and silly he is. And yeah, that could be. Some people expect the, the spiritual leader to be all Bible. Right. Like, you know, when we, we think about like holy guys, we think of, you know, Charles Spurgeon, um, those hellfire and brimstone preachers, you know, they're not, they're not playing checkers. They're not playing, you know, board games. They're not uh, in acapella groups. They're not telling funny dad jokes. You just think of them as like, you know, they eat bread and drink water and then preach. Yeah, and that's sad if that's what people assume Christian's life or our minister's life is supposed to be like without fun and enjoyment and laughter and joy. Mm -hmm. um, there was a movement going on, 2010s, uh, that kind of warned kids to get off social media, get off, get off screen time, you know, stop Stop goofing around and start redeeming the time. As in, you know, maybe you should allot some or all of your time to thinking about the ministry and the mission of Jesus. And I know that that can be taken both ways. That can be taken as like a very healthy, uh, I need to manage my time better so that there's, there's, you know, good rest and good work. And that can also be taken as, oh, God must hate fun. I, I tend to think of fun or laughter or joy is a mindset rather than something we do so if you i used to play soccer in high school and college and if you think about it it's 22 people chasing a ball 90 minutes plus running the whole time my coach used to say if you're standing still you're going to be sitting so we'd run for 90 minutes does that sound fun at all <laughs> no but yet yeah. we had fun when we did it and so I think we can do mundane, boring tasks and somehow make a way to make it fun. And we can do really hard work that's strenuous and exhausting, and we can still have a mindset that can make it fun. Or we can just say, like my daughter did this uh, week when we were helping uh, clean out a church. I don't like this. This is boring. I yeah. said, okay, it's boring. 
but I'm going to have fun because I'm throwing furniture out of a second story window into a dumpster. Guess what? Let's make that fun. Oh, yeah, that is definitely fun. The fun is a, is a mindset. It's an attitude. If we don't think we're going to have fun, we probably won't. Yeah. Uh, do you think that maybe there's a line between those who spend like almost all of their budget on fun, all of their time on fun, all of their brain on fun? And, and those who like just work, 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 be it for a job or for the gospel, you know, where's that line? Oh, that's a good question. Where, where's a, what are you kind of asking? Where's a healthy balance of fun versus responsibility? Yeah. Like take, take for example, the Sabbath day. The Sabbath is 24 hours of no work, you know, rest, enjoyment. You know, right now, if you told my teenager son, you can only do what you love and you know enjoy doing uh for 24 hours a week he'd think that was too little he's like no i like doing three hour TikTok binges he could be on the phone for as long as a work week if he wanted to mm -hmm. and i myself given the laziness inside of me could binge a whole entire season of a show in under a week if i wanted to so where would the line be that's a good question well i i personally think that it's good to have those opportunities to de-stress or have fun but if if i neglect the responsibilities that I have as a dad or as a husband or as a pastor or as a minister or as a church consultant and don't do any of those things uh, well one I won't have any money left to have fun with and I also have to balance taking care of me but also what about the responsibilities that I've been given and so that helps me kind of figure out where that line is I think God this is a universal thing for all of us that there's a there's a point of enjoyment and then there's a point of junk brain uh, playing video games for too long where you're just your brain just kind of feels like junk like you 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 kind of know in the back of your head like Ugh, this is just I'm just going through the motions or you know eating uh, eating a whole family size bag of Doritos like there's a point where your body just feels like junk and you're like okay this is not fun anymore but you still do it um, I think that's a, a universal feeling and maybe us in the Western culture feel it more. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think? Oh, I don't know. I'm still, I'm still trying to keep thinking about the fun and the Bible and the authors. Um, and so I'm, my mind is there at the moment, but uh, it's a good question, Mike. You know, as a campus minister, creativity is my, my tool set, you mm -hmm. know, and creativity and fun go hand in hand together. I can, I can do lecture upon lecture about how, you know, people happy and laughing, they they're they're more agreeable, they they're better listeners, they're more open to chat and to share. Um, they build better friendships. We used to have this phrase in improv called I can learn more about a person with 10 minutes of playtime than with an hour of conversation. Mm. And, you know, I just think the the positives definitely outweigh the negatives, but I don't want to step into the boundaries where, you know, 24-7 goofiness becomes my, my scriptural strategy for doing ministry. I agree. And I think sometimes I've, I've seen some youth groups before where all they do is have games yeah and fun and then they play then they have some food then they do some more games and then free dodgeball or and i'm like ah oh, that's that's great and we've built some trust and gotten to know each other but why are we here why did you come to the church right so there's a balance of well we came because of jesus to learn more about him we also want to have fun yeah that, that's always a challenge in ministry is how do you have fun uh, one that comes to my mind real quick is uh, author of the book of Mark adds a verse that is, I think, hilarious. And why would he have included this? So this is Mark 14. This is right after Jesus is betrayed. Um, Judas comes and kisses him. Peter tries to stop him and cuts the dude's ear off. Um, and then it says uh, they take Jesus, arrest him, and everyone fled. And then in verse 51, and a young man following him, referring to Jesus, with nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the linen cloth and ran away naked. I don't know about you, but I Ouch. just laugh, picturing some dude in the middle of the night following Jesus as he's arrested, and they try to catch him, and he runs around naked. The author includes that in there. Other than to laugh, I don't know why else you would include that, but 
I think when we look close enough, there's some humor and fun in our scriptures. You know, when that guy went to small groups in the underground church, they would probably razz him about that. Oh, you're the dude that that lost your linen cloth. (laughs) There comes Mr. Naked. Oh. Do you think there is a stereotype that non-Christians have about Christians that they don't have fun? Right. Um... One of our directors, Tom, uh, talking to the uh, an old director from Brockport, and the director of Brockport used to, you know, throw some serious shade on him because I don't think she liked Christians gathering together. Um, and once uh, Tom noticed that she had a Led Zeppelin poster, I believe it's Led Zeppelin, um, and he made a comment that, you know, he really likes their music, and she was stunned. A Christian listening to Led Zeppelin? And he said, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. I can't listen to good music. And she laughed. And I think from then on, they had a really good relationship. Yeah, that would definitely be a stereotype that Christians can't have fun. Mm -hmm. Um, There's times I haven't been invited to, uh, it's don't call them parties anymore. They call them Um, Mm get-togethers. Because I'm a Christian. Oh, well, he won't have fun. But yeah, there's that. There is that stereotype. Why, why do you think there is that stereotype that Christians either can't have fun or don't have fun? Somewhere between the line of I don't know. It it, it depends on the person, really. But I, I generally think that we might we might have said no to joining up with the secular world and going to their fun stuff a little too much. We might have said, no, no, I can't go to that. I'm sorry, I can't go to that party. Uh, you know, I'm sorry, I can't do that. And we might have said that a few too many times, which started this revolution. Oh, well, we shouldn't invite them anymore because, you know, they're going to be off praying while I'm drinking and partying. It's true. Which means that some people just assume that there's only one type of fun. Mm-hmm. And especially with college students, as you know, I remember being at Brockport walking to class and at 10 a.m. on a Wednesday morning, college students were having fun. And their fun was beer pong and their front porch at 10 a.m. on a Wednesday morning. Uh, mm-hmm. Where my fun was joy was getting up and reading my Bible on my way to class or listening to it. Um, and then f- figuring out how I could go through my day. And somehow I made that fun. Um, But we have different ideas of what fun is and what fun must not be allowed to be. Yeah, and that brings up a good point that, you know, not, we need to reintroduce what joy looks like um, and how it can be healthy. Like even, like even a secular audience would say, um, you know, beer pong at 10 a.m. Hey guys, you might be, you might have a problem. (laughs) And, you know, we, we can't discount the fact that, hey, waking up, you know, doing some type of a meditation, some type of a centering yourself on God activity might open you up to a lot more positive, good times than, I don't know, waking up at 12 with a hangover, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, fun and fun. Is there only certain times we can have fun? Well, I know when God made the world six days you shall work uh the seventh day you shall not do work so it sounds to me if i'm not mistaken that you know our labor needs to outweigh our sheer enjoyment but then that kind of that brings up the question is are you not allowed to enjoy your work is is your work not supposed to be fun well that's a good question i mentioned a verse earlier first Thessalonians 5, 17 says, pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. My favorite verse is the verse before that. Be joyful always. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm a big thinker that it's a mindset of what we do and how we do it. And I personally get bored easy. So I make everything a game or a challenge. Try to keep fun in those things that aren't always as fun as others might think they are. And that's good. A lot of people don't know what they, what is fun like within themselves like our world um you know if we if we go to social media and you know we're we're a teenager a college student and you know social media and television tells us that you know going to drinking parties is fun you know being a slacker is fun but you know there's actually a, a whole spectrum of you know what's fun you know enjoying nature reading a book doing a crossword puzzle breathing exercises um, they all fall into joy is there a difference between joy and happiness and fun or can they all be lumped together i think christians are scared to say fun we like to say joy Mm -hmm. because if you go to god and you know 
before the pearly gates and he asked what you did and you said oh i had a life of fun you know it sounds a lot worse than i had a life of joy it's true now i want to paint a picture real quick for our listeners Um, something i've been studying deeper and and really in depth is the times that jesus the the spiritual rabbi like kind of like the pastor of the time one of them it was often seen reclining or sitting at a table with non-believers i don't know if they'd want him to join unless he was having fun unless he was fun to be around mm-hmm. it tells me that number one food is fun everyone likes good yeah. food i don't know many people that don't like at least something that tastes good and jesus did that a lot of times he didn't just hang out and have food with non-believers he had thousands of people in the wilderness and he did something that would have been fun to watch dude's got one or two fish and all of a sudden he's feeding a thousand people with fish by you but that'd be pretty fun to watch how how on earth is he pulling off this miracle so we see a lot of fun in some ways or at least entertainment or intrigue of people and that's why they wanted to know who jesus was and spend time with him because he was so special that it must have been fun uh, you think about the excitement of the crowds with zacchaeus right the crowds are so big because jesus is coming into town that even this dude that didn't really know jesus wanted to because what's the hype what's so exciting about this guy right at one time jesus was trending and you did not want to have fomo fear of missing out (laughs) i know there's a few verses where it talks about joyfulness um and cheerfulness like psalm 30 11 where the psalmist says you've turned my morning into joyful dancing You've taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy. Well, it doesn't sound like we need to be serious all the time. Um, Proverbs 15, 13, a happy heart makes the face cheerful, but a heartache crushes the spirit. Well, that's good. And then we have Proverbs 17, 22, a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Yeah, all these remind me that what uh, one of my professors said in our spiritual formation class, he said, uh, a Christian that's experiencing joy is more, the probability is that they're going to be more obedient to the tasks ahead of them. Another quick thought that was not in our notes was that the word dance or dancing is used between 19 and 21 times in your Bible. Mm -hmm. I've never seen someone dance that was not having a good time or that was boring bored or angry yeah the dance of sadness has not been invented yet right and so i just thought about that that dancing is something we see a lot in the old testament we even see david doing it naked um at one point which may or may not have been the right thing to do but he was celebrating the victory um, that their warriors had just done as they um, won a battle and he was dancing in the streets naked and they're dancing out of celebration and joy and excitement and so that is a, another another one that we see. Um, I had a, a good verse that I liked coming out of Nehemiah. This is an Old Testament book that not too many people have memorized or spent too much time in. But in it, uh, Nehemiah is trying to rebuild the temple. And Nehemiah says, Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks. And send some of those who have nothing prepared. This day is sacred to our Lord. Do not grieve. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. And that, that kind of answers the main question, right? Does does God have fun? Well, it just says the joy of the Lord is our strength. So God must right. have some fun and has some joy. Absolutely. And what I like about these verses is anyone in any economic bracket or any situation that you don't have to be rich um, with every toy on the market and every hobby and skill to be to have fun you know the fun is universal in god's kingdom whether you're poor or slave or free that's right and i think joy is a universal language some have said or laughter even if we don't speak the same language and can't interpret each other um you know, we could watch a play or an act or even a mime um, with no words and still laugh at the funny things they do. Um, and that laughter is the same whether I'm in Papua New Guinea, South Africa, or North America. We all laugh similar as humans. Um, so one of the, I was going to say that uh, King Solomon in his book of Ecclesiastes, he spent most of the verse telling you how pointless it is to be rich, how pointless it is to own everything under the sun, how pointless it is to do every hobby. But then he makes the startling 
uh, conclusion. He says, so I commend the enjoyment of life because there's nothing better for a person under the sun than to eat and drink and be glad. Then joy will accompany them in their toil all the days of the life God has given them under the sun. Now, that's Ecclesiastes 8.15. And it kind of gives us like, a, why why do we take breaks? Why do we have fun? Um, so that we can be empowered to work. So that um, the toil that we do, um, you know, it has a good balance to it. I think I when think... I'm on my deathbed, someday, hopefully in the far future, I look back, I, I'm not going to remember very well all the hard work that I did as much as I will the rewards from it and the joy and happiness came out of that. So I, I definitely like Ecclesiastes, how he says, eat, drink, and be merry or be glad because our life is short. It's true. And I think in our world, we might have simplified it too much. Are you team fun or team work? Um, if you're team fun, you then you're just about living and binging and you're never going to do anything worthwhile in your life. And if your team work, then you're going to produce money and get a lot of work done, but you're never going to enjoy anything. And I think the Bible really, really wants us to find the, the middle ground on that one. I agree. I think that's good. Um, I am going to be facilitating a funeral this weekend. At a funeral, we often call it a funeral, but it's also called a celebration of life. Usually when we open up a time for family members and friends, that come and share thoughts and comments and memories they have. At a funeral, it's always the happy things. It's always the joyful things that we want to remember, that we do remember about a person. That fits right along with another verse we have in here, Proverbs 17, 22. Joyful heart is good medicine. Mm -hmm. The broken spirit dries up the bones. And so as I'm preparing for this funeral in two days, I want it to be a joyful celebration for this lady who knew Jesus. We know where her hope is and where she is going to be and that we're going to see her. Um, and I want people to think about that joy um, and the hope that we have as Christians. And hopefully that joyfulness will go into their heart and give them some good medicine out of this verse. But if we only sit there and mourn, this verse says a broken spirit dries up the bones. And so without joy and happiness, I don't know where I would be <laughs> in my life. So I guess turning it back around to Mr. John Puritan, uh, I think there's a little bit of truth on both sides. Uh, yes, you know, play video games, read your comic books, if that gives you joy. Don't do it until your, you know, until your brain turns to mush. Everybody has a different mush level because God also put, you know, work and, you know, he put, he put obstacles that you need to be serious about. And so that when you reap the rewards of overcoming that obstacle, your playtime will be even that much sweeter. We'll follow that up with lyrics from a 50 cent song. Joy wouldn't feel so good if it wasn't for pain. Sunny days wouldn't be so good if it wasn't for rain. And so that idea coming off what you said is those joys, the bad times make the joyful things even more happy. I mean, those mm -hmm. things are what keep us going and, and keep us excited about life and keep us with passion and looking forward to the next day. Mm -hmm. Now, the one the one can of worms I think we avoided, and maybe this would be great for a future podcast, but what is inside the fun? Because um, we don't know what John is playing and reading. Um, is he playing wholesome stuff or is he reading, you know, very vulgar and violent stuff? But that is, that's a whole different conversation on fun. Yes, it is. That could be a great episode in the future. I think one last verse we didn't hit yet was Proverbs 24, 13. Eat honey, my son, for it is good. And the honeycomb is sweet to your taste. Well, I hear dentists hate that verse. Oh, I bet they do. I, I think the last thing that is, is a Christian for those that are Christians, is, is a joy that we have because of what God has done. And I think that that makes my inner sides happy, knowing mm -hmm. that even though I'm a boring and not fun person and messy person, that I have joy knowing that someday I will be with God. And so for me, that's an extra part about being a Christian that is just joyful and happy, knowing what God has done is enough to cover all the messy things that I have done wrong. Right. And once again, they walk hand in hand. Why do we have this option to have fun? Because of all the good news that comes with being alive with God and being in God's family. It's true. And I think that uh, we have comedy uh, as a, a thing that everyone enjoys. Um, and a quick plug, on Wednesday nights we do a comedy watch party with our Campus 180 group. And yesterday we were just listening to a comedian 
and he was just talking about his life and the way that he said it. You had people that were seven years old laughing and people in their senior citizens in a chair were laughing in the crowd. It's medicine for everybody. That is true. And Rochester right now is having a fringe fest, which is like a off off Broadway theater and comedians and improv groups and filmmakers all putting up shows. And uh, Lynn and I, we saw an acrobat team that uses like household trash to do acrobatic tricks. Oh boy. Yeah, and it was very funny. And there was a child who was like cracking up, even though it was like 10 o'clock, like it was probably way past his bedtime. But just the fact that he was laughing made me want to laugh. That's a good point. I think laughter is contagious, right? When someone else laughs, it's hard not to laugh with them. Absolutely. But for all of our listeners who are wondering whether or not you're allowed to have fun as a Christian, we challenge you to find ways to have more fun than you can ever think about. Mm -hmm. Because we're supposed to have fun and enjoy what we're doing. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Find a way to have a mindset and an attitude. I'm going to find a way to make whatever I'm doing be fun or exciting. And that should help us through our day. Excellent. Excellent. So, yeah, I think we nailed it. And I'm wondering what our all of our listeners are thinking and what questions they might have. And you're more than welcome to go on our 180 fun social or our campus 180 Discord, which will be the link will be in the description. And come bring us bring up these conversations with us. We'd love to have them. That's right. Well, thanks for joining us, everybody. 